Hi. Good afternoon. It's uh, Tuesday, the 21st of April, as I record this, and I'm, I'm Warren. I'm the minister at uh, Greenford Baptist Church, and uh, uh, welcome to you. I want to read uh, from Psalm 24, uh, well known and well used psalm. And it's a psalm I'm going to say that for me, a number of years ago, um, I, I felt really. Uh, strongly from the Lord that one time I had to do a re read it here at, at the front of the church and to really sort of shout it out and uh, it was something about this particular psalm that just resonated with me and it has never fully uh, left me it's, it's, it's always sat around um, if I'm up front it's always sat around in in regards to uh, uh, anything related maybe slightly to to ministry for me um, it, 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 yeah I I, I don't want to. I never want to sit here with a sense of ha ha. Yes, this is all about me. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm never quite that sort of person. But there is there is something about this psalm that just does not leave me in relation to uh, sort of my role as a pastor, and, and quite frankly, actually, just just me as a person, as a Christian. So I want to read it to you. Uh, you'll know it well, but it's Psalm 24. Again, you can pause me now if you want to quickly grab it. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God their Saviour. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. Open up, ancient gates. Open up ancient doors and let the king of glory enter who is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord invincible in battle open up ancient gates open up ancient doors and let the king of glory enter who is the king of glory the lord of heaven's armies he is the king of glory. Three things I want to really quickly pull from uh, that I believe the Lord is really pointing out. And, and, and with this psalm, each time I've felt the cause to really reflect on it, um, it, God brought something new out for me. So verses one and two, verses one and two, I'm not going to reread them all again, but verses one and two is about the, the fact that actually the earth and all its people are the Lord's. And, and for me, that one and two is just to show how awesome God is, uh, how big he is, and it's, and it's, it's, it's recognising the hum, humongousness. So I'm terrible at words. I should really never do these things. But the, 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 who, just who the Lord is. Just literally, he laid the foundations of the earth. He, um, uh, for, for, for ancient Hebrews, it would have been the, that actually they would see the earth, literally, physically, the, the land that we stand on, as 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 absolutely firm and it creates the boundaries to keep the chaoticness of the sea back so god is all powerful able to control he created the earth's foundations and it is his he's the builder he's got a right to claim to it and so then we go to verses three to six which is all about who may enter into god's presence well and it is sort of is very pacific but God, I felt God really point out to me, actually, this is just humility. This is recognising that you're not good enough, but actually humility in Christ now, when we understand what Christ has done for us, and I drop my pride, you drop your pride, we know that how much we can enter into God's presence, not because we have to be absolutely have got it right today, but it's because Jesus got it right 2,000 years ago for us to be righteous that we can enter in and we take on board the cloak of humility to say, I can enter into God's presence. And then seven to eight, the open up the ancient gates 
And, and this is where I want to encourage anybody that's watching us online, but, but for those who've entered the building that I'm in right now at Greenford Baptist Church, you're going to pick up on some of this in just a second. It, for me, there is a sense right now, and it has been all through this psalm, and I've preached on it before, that you know sometimes God wants us to open up our ancient way of thinking. And there's been various pastoral times I've used this, talking about that we have mindset patterns that God wants us to, to allow to open up ancient ways of thinking, to allow the King of glory to enter. Today, as I was reflecting on this psalm, I was, I was walking around in this building. I had to come in here today uh, for various reasons. And I just suddenly looked and I thought, and as I was walking down the center of the main worship area now now for those who don't know uh, a few years ago or just over a uh, year ago now um, we, we we had a flood in here and we had to have a uh, new flooring fitted and as i was walking we've all gone wow uh, anybody's entered when the new floor was fitted it was like wow wow and there's a real sense from uh, from most of us and within the leadership team and whatever else with this sense of yeah it's like Whoa, this is like God's shaken up. There's like new foundation been laid. There's, there's something different happening. And I, I got reminded of that again this morning. And then I, I, for me, I just looked and, and I'm, I'm just going to sort of flip the camera around. So excuse me, I hope this works. Um, I'm going to actually have to turn it by the looks of it. I can't quite do what I wanted to do. So I'm going to turn it. So there is the glorious new floor. And as I, as I walked, actually, I'm going to do this. As I, uh, as I walked around this new floor and saw this, I went, look at this. And I felt God say to me, and it's not just about GBC, but it's about ourselves as well. Yeah, it's all new. It's all ready to go. It's ready to be filled with my glory. In a way that you've never experienced a way. It really is ready to be completely filled. Your life, the life of this church, anybody, wherever you are, I'm ready to fill your churches with my glory. But open up the ancient gates. And I was like, well, but, but Lord, you know, things are shifting, we're moving things. And then what I do is I looked around, and excuse me, bear with me, for those who don't know, but we, we've sort of, just, just before the lockdown happened, uh, we was able to change our art corner slightly, uh, where we put more art up. It's great, it's really beautiful, there's nothing wrong with it at all, it's absolutely lovely. And we've changed a few things, um, just around the peripheral edges, around on the walls and just in the foyer, we've changed a few things. And, and I, I felt God say, great, but you're playing around with the edges. In your life, our lives, some of us are playing around just with the edges. We're, 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 we're tarting up the edges of our lives with God. We're saying, oh, that looks okay. That, that'll do. That's enough. And God is saying, no, 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 no. I want the center. I want the center. The center of your life. And I'm ready to come in as the king of glory. I'm ready to come in. And, and the experience you're going to have of me is going to be like glorious. It's going to be beyond what you can imagine. It is going to be absolutely glorious. But I need the center. The, the foundation is already there. It's not something you've got to strive for because the foundation is Jesus Christ. It's not that you've got to make yourself more pure. It's not that you've got to make yourself more clean. That's already there. That's already appeared. That's already there. Jesus Christ has laid the foundation already. But God wants to fill it. He wants to fill you with his glory. He wants to fill you with a relationship. He wants to fill me as well. He wants to almost impart, download, saturate. But the problem is that a number of us... And I will include my partially myself in this. I will have to include myself in this. In humility, I will have to include myself in this. That, that we haven't, we're playing still around with the edges. 
We're playing around with the edges. We're playing around with the borders. We're playing around with the borders. And, and the Lord is saying, I want the centre. Walk with me to the centre. Hopefully this is not going to be too deep jiggery, but walk with me to the centre. Walk with me through the centre. And on our back wall, we have some uh, prophetic words that have come to the church in different times. And I was looking at them again today in, in quiet reflection of this. And I'm just going to approach them one by one for those who've never maybe seen them before. And as you can tell, I'm trying to learn. I can't seem to flip the camera around in the recording. So uh, hopefully you can read that. Going to do one by one. And if you can't read it straight away, uh, you can always pause and try and read it. And hopefully you will be able to. And then another one. Oh, I'll try and pull that back a little bit. And then they're all in order. And this is our latest one that we've just, literally just before lockdown, we've actually put this finally up. Um, hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm really, I'm trying to do this. Now, it was for these that we... I looked at these and, and the Lord was talking about needing spring clean my house. Open its doors wide to my spirit. This is 1998. Open its doors wide and I will fill it. Open its door. The God wants to pour out onto the streets. We know this for some time here at Greenford. Forget your past mistakes. Forget all that. They've raised in Jesus Christ. Forget it. I want to do a new thing. I need clean lives. Forget the trivia. The insignificant things all around you. Fix your eyes firmly on me. Allow me to cleanse you. And then this is what got me. And these are the last two. And these have only been around in the last four or five years, I believe. Um... I'm trying to remember, but it's this thing. Climb to the top of the mountains. Now, that's Psalm 24. They were ascending the mountain. But I will break the mold. I will break the mold. Open its doors wide. You know where I'm going with this. Open ancient gates. And then the Lord says, remain in me. And this is where we're at now. Remaining in God. Spending time with him. I will reveal in time, be ready for action, but spend more time with me, says the Lord. And you will hear me when I whisper. Be patient and do not be anxious and go ahead of me, but be in step with me. But the Lord is saying, open up ancient gates. Allow me to feel the center of your life. This is a place for the king of glory to come in, not just in this building, but in you. The king of glory. It is time to break the mold. It is time to, to throw open those ancient gates. It is the time to allow God in. Uh, to remove being traditional in the way that we interact with our God. To remove traditionalism, I suppose, is the right phrase to use. Um, um, I'm not, I'm not going to take this quote. This is going to go to somebody else, Jeff Lucas. But there's nothing wrong with traditional styles, but it's when traditionalism kicks in. It's when things do not, you do not allow the Lord to, to speak to you differently. It's when we don't allow God to interact with us differently. When we've decided, well, this is the formula that's been laid down and this is how it works. Well, actually, that's no longer good enough, I do not believe. Because the Lord has said, open up the ancient gates. Let the king of glory enter. Let him enter. Let him come in. Because it no longer wants to play with the edges. He wants the very center of your life. 
And when we allow the Lord to come into the very centre of our life, the trivia will disappear. Our, our bother with the trivia will just completely and utterly disappear. So I want to encourage you as much as I can. Please, it, don't take this as a sermon of condemnation. It's not. It's about the Lord saying, come on, give me your very centre. I don't know how you're going to do it. You might have to scream, shout it out on the floor. I'll be honest, that's what I ended up doing. I just literally just screamed out, well, I need you, God, and I need you right at the centre. I need it all. Let me just, just give you all. I don't know how else to do it, but just keep repeating. Lord, take it. Take it. It's yours. And, and, and just show me where I need to give you stuff away. Maybe that's what you need to do. Yes, reading your word every day, that's fantastic. Do all of that stuff. But it's more than that. It's so much more. Not because you've got to strive for it. It's already laid the foundation. It's, all, it's the humility moment. It's the, Lord, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. In the name of Jesus, just take it. God bless to you. Amen.